welcome to the woman kid. My turn. I am. I am. Guys, I have a hat on today because I have a fever because I have bronchitis. But our fans know that I have bronchitis like regularly. Although it's been a long time since I had bronchitis, like four months. Like, good job on health. Wait, so you're only healthy in the summer? I guess that means I should like move to an island. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm planning with the Greek Isles. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. But they still get winter. Maybe we should do Hawaii. Anyway, moving on. Yes, yes. Oh, man, you said Hawaii. Now I'm like, what? okay. Anyway, she has a cold drink in here, so she's probably gonna cough more. And we're gonna we're gonna just say it's cough medicine. <clears throat> I'm joking. Anyway, it is cough medicine. It is not. It is cranberry juice and <clears throat> I'm joking. No, it's not. Anyway, it's we wrote juice. some. We wrote some. Oh, oh no! Wait, I'm Jane. Right, and I'm Winona. We remember to introduce ourselves. Jeff Bailey. High five. Go us. Professional list. Gotta do a little, a little thing. Okay, I'm done. All right, we wrote books. Let's be yes. professional. So, the And I Thought series. So, um, the first one is And I Thought the Voice Was Bad with Other Life Lessons. And I Thought Being Grown Up Was Easy. And, and I Thought I Could Juggle, juggle it, all. it All. Which yeah. is sold out. Thank you, you guys. Yeah. You enjoy the support. We, we like to check more. Any, I'm, I shouldn't have been on it. I take that back. Wow. Well, I have so much to say so the time. And I thought I didn't have Johnny alone. <laughs> and I thought he was the one, haven't we all? And I thought um, I had it all figured out, a fiction episode one, and then a workbook around here somewhere. And The Misfit Guys, the other series. Um, the Misfit Guys, a sassy sway that leaves crooked footprints. And The Misfit Guys, Cocktail 12 Days, and the LBD, The Little Black Dress. Okay. Her dad thought it was the little black daughter. So he has his own poem in the book talking about my little black daughter. He's like, for the LBD. No, 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 no. And, but yes, you guys, drum roll, please. I have a new book out. Oh, yeah, she does. Well, that's the food copy, apparently. But anyway, she has a new book out, the um, Widow's Dead page. And, and our magazine, the 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Advocates, and Artists. Okay. So I think that, like, figures. Yeah, yeah, that's all we're going to talk about right now. She's more important than us anyway. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not done. You can find out everything you ladies are doing at www.andwethought.com or pick up the books on amazon.com. And while you're at the ladies page, please take a moment to go to the ladies page, go to the middle, and see the charities that we proudly support. And also check out this like life while you're there. And that's all available on amazon.com, but we have a wonderful guest today. Wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? I'd be happy to do that. Uh, my name is Diana Young. I am with Literary Classics and the Great American Book Festival. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about both Literary Classics. Uh, we do, uh, we review and have an awards program for literature from everything from early reader on up to new adult. So pretty much <laughs> covers the gamut. Um, you know, people keep kind of blurring the lines of what new adult is well it used to be young adult and then they tacked on the whole new adult thing um and so really sometimes we're looking at an audience um, for readership up to almost 28 years of age so everything from the wee little ones you know who aren't even reading yet or or pre pre-birth even because people do like to read to their children in utero um all the way up to 28 years of age so um that's what we're about basically Literary Classics started about 10 years ago. We had a children's or a parenting magazine and people were sending us books for review all the time. And so it just kind of evolved into this bigger program. And now we have um, authors from around the world that we honor annually. And for years we've been going around attending book festivals um, that we hold and that we go to in conjunction with our award ceremony that we do annually. And um, a few years ago, we were invited um, repeatedly to bring a book festival to the Black Hills, which is where we're located. And so we gave it a shot and backed by popular demand. So the Great American Book Festival um, is another, it's kind of a sideline, a tag on, and it's growing and getting bigger and better. And so that event's taking place in May. And we'll do our um, author awards in conjunction with the book festival. So... The book festival is um, one day it's a writer's conference all day long, free, open to the public. And then we do uh, what we call a lit walk. It's kind of like a pub crawl. So you go from pub to pub, only it's lit themed. Um, and then the following day we do a full day book festival. And then the following day we honor our authors for literary classics. So that's kind of it in a great big 
Okay, okay, honestly, you wrapped that up so nicely. So I have five questions here, and you answered all of them. What am I supposed to do with the rest of the time? <laughs> well, you're supposed to, like, at least drink the time. I know. I know. I would love, I would love to talk, because you have a, an audience of authors. Um, I would love to talk to authors about um, do's and don'ts, because we see a whole lot of things that authors do well, and we see a lot of things that we sure wish authors knew better. So, I mean, I, I'm thrilled to offer some advice and let people know, you know, why aren't your books getting reviewed? Why aren't you getting the exposure that you want? Why is your book not winning an award? What can you do to increase your chances? I'd be thrilled to talk about that. Please answer. Those are my questions. And now she's like, I'm the, okay, go for it. Go for it. Run the show. So let's so our new guest <laughs> is Diana. And she sits on the board of the, of the great <laughs> book festival in Black Hill. He's going to run the show for the day. We're just going to sit here and look cute and nod. Oh, no, Go for it, Diane. So what are the do's and don'ts that they should not do about review? So we can like at least pretend like we did something. <laughs> all right, you pretend it. Let's go. Okay, the do's and don'ts. First of all, um, I, could, I could talk for days just about before you even publish your book, before you even get started um, with the final publishing process. Um, you kind of want to look at your timeline and you want to look at it backwards because there are a lot of um, opportunities for exposure for authors that if they publish too quickly, they'll miss. So say, for instance, um, you want to get, um, so you know, all the books that have been published and it's brand new and nobody's ever even seen a single copy of it yet. And yet on the back of the cover, it says, you know, you know, Times says this about it or, you know, the whatever, all the different publications and all the big reviewers, they, they've already reviewed it. The only way you can get somebody to review your book it, that way, in that sense, is if you have an advanced review copy. So basically, you want to publish a pre-copy of your book. Um, it's not, it won't have an ISBN on it yet, and it won't be available for purchase. So you send out copies of that, um, and then you let people know, reviewers, you let them know what your release date is. Um, there are a lot of reviewers that won't even give you the time of day if your book is already published. So, so that's one thing. Um, another thing is that I think people forget authors. There's so many people who are doing it um, indie now, you know, and, and I, I really um, commend people for being brave enough to do that. And it's not easy to do. And years ago when we first started reviewing books that were um, self-published or through, you know, small boutique publishing houses, the quality that we were seeing was pretty inferior. And that is, by the way, um, a big reason a lot of review companies won't review a book. Um, if it's an indie book or self-published, um, because the, the assumption is that it's not going to be very well done. That's getting better and better all the time. And kudos to all the authors who are really dotting their I's and crossing their T's to make that work. That's wonderful. Um, but that being said, gosh, I just went off on a whole little tangent. And I was trying to remember where I was going with that. But basically, you need to, um, you need to, you need to send off your books to these people to be, re to be reviewed. And this is what I was going to say. Um, I get a lot of authors that forget. They forget that there's nothing in it for anybody to review a book. There's nothing in it for us to review a book. And yet they, they come off with this sense of entitlement like, hey, I sent you a book. Why didn't you review it? Your book might be amazing. It just might not fit the genre of books that we review, or we might just be overwhelmed and have too many books to review. But the second that somebody sends us an email and says, hey, you know, with that kind of a sense of entitlement, it's like, come on, we have better things to do. And we have lots of other books that need to re be reviewed. And as soon as you get an author who um, takes on that sense of, you know, it's, it's your responsibility to take care of me, mm -mm, you can't go there. You need to be humble and you need to understand that there's a very slim chance that your book will get reviewed, even if you send it off a review. So um, that's one thing that I always like to point out. Another thing is for, for self-published authors, um, get a copy of the Chicago Style Guide. It's the Chicago Manual of Style. And it's a book that's it's like the Bible for authors. And it has everything from formatting to um, oh, grammatical and typographical and mechanical issues that you need to be aware of. Um, everything from your front matter to acknowledgments and, and how to do it well. So like if you were to go to a bookstore, if you were to go to Barnes and Noble and you were to go through the books, you want to see what, what is it they're doing in those books that makes them look so much better, so much more professional than what I put together here. 
and, and really pay attention to those differences because those differences really do make a difference. Um, and when we, are, when we are doing our awards program, you wouldn't believe we, the level of books that we've been getting in is just tremendous. It's so exciting to see um, everybody really raising the bar. So when it gets down to the very end and we have you know, a number of books that score exactly the same because we have a judging rubric, right? So we've got all these books with the same score. And how do you narrow down between all of the books with the same score? That's when you start nitpicking. That's when you start going, how does their front matter look? Did they put their acknowledgements that should be in the back, in the front of the book? Did they, you know, just little things like that. Did they, did they watch their margins? Did they, did they have their book, the actual part of the book start as a right-hand read, which it should. A lot of authors will, they miss this point where, you know, you open up your book and they start the text on the left-hand side. It never should be. There should be a blank page here. And then right hand read, that's where it starts. Just little things like that that you maybe think don't make a difference, but they do. And especially when you're comparing one book to the next, then, then really it's, it could be the defining, you know, what, what's going to make the decision of if your book is an award winner or if somebody else's, or the difference between a gold or a silver. So, um, gosh, I could go on. I'm trying to talk fast because I have so much to say. But, um, yeah, did, did that bring up any questions for you all? A uh, ton, <laughs> yeah. But most of it is about my book. Oh, okay. <laughs> please, don't be, please don't be the narcissist today. Because this is going to be a really good thing for all of our indie because we are indie authors and mm -hmm. we're kind of well known in the indie world for helping authors. Pretty much, yeah. Um, I did have a question, a personal question, but I'm going to let you continue with your do's and don'ts. As I mean, you're the executive producer for the day, so are you yes. okay with continuing? Okay, so in the interest of time, because you said 15 to 20 minutes, so the one thing that I should mention, um, and I'll just real quick while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to put a plug for all of our websites. So the Great American Book Festival, um, that's gabfest.info, and that event takes place in May. And so let's see, the dates are, our writers conference is Friday, May 10th. Um, and then the book festival is Saturday, May 11th. And then the lit walk is Friday evening. So that Friday the 10th also. Um, so, and we're accepting. We'll be there Friday evening. Yeah. evening. Because we just want the pub walk. Like, yeah. we don't. <laughs> I can't even tell you. And we really, we kind of, um, we kind of created this based on other book festivals around the country that we've attended. It's ones that were just fun and dynamic and really have a lot to offer for the authors. And so. That's what we're doing. I mean, it's just it's just a great event. People really enjoyed it, um, you know, previously, and so we're excited to be bringing it back. So anyway, that's gabfest.info. Um, Literary Classics, our website is clcawards.org. And what made me think of that is one other website that we started. And the reason we started it is because we had so many authors that would send us um, inquiries. They'd say, hey, you know, why didn't my book get reviewed? Or Hey, why didn't why didn't I win an award? Or you know, would you offer me some you know some criticism, some constructive criticism, what I can do to to be better? And so eventually, we had so many of these questions that we actually created a, an entire website for authors, and it's called author.pub, and so author.pub, and it has everything you can possibly want to know. Well, I'm sure that industry is changing so much all the time, but everything that you know, whenever we have any new information, we pop it onto that website. So, but it has everything from, say you want to, you have a book, you know, you've got your manuscript, what do you do next? Um, or, or do you dare try to self-publish? Or if you're going to try to go traditional, how do you find an agent? How do you go about doing that? So it basically has all of those steps all broken down. And then we have um, guest authors who post on our, we have several blogs um, that link to it. And so we have several guest authors and agents and publishers that also provide information on there so that's really a host of very valuable information so um, use that as a resource and and we love for we love to have people send us questions too and let us know what other information they'd like to see on our site as well so um do's and don'ts <laughs> so so you know a couple of the number three bullet point number three okay i just wanted to yeah. like the people are writing notes bullet point number three this is your number th your third do's and don'ts. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So the do's and don'ts. Um, one thing that I see in fiction a lot that people who um who don't have maybe you don't have the academic 
background from a literature standpoint so that you're that you're fully aware of some of the grammatical issues that can really um, really hurt your book basically because because really you know I mean there are grammatical rules there are mechanical rules there are uh, so many of those rules that really can be broken that's fine um, but some of them that just flat out can't be broken is points of view so when you're talking about fiction and you're talking about somebody's telling a story right so so you're reading a chapter and you're you're in the chapter and the first three paragraphs one person's perspective is being told from you know from that person's perspective mm -hmm. and within the same chapter all of a sudden you switch gears and now you've got another person's perspective it doesn't even have to be that person talking if that person's speaking or not that's not relevant to this point um, it can just be a matter of that another person's thoughts come into play as you're reading that book as the reader that gets very confusing and so point of view I think is one of the biggest issues we see we see get a lot of dings um, on our reviews we have a judging rubric that covers everything from point of view to grammatical errors to typographical errors and all of that um, and the biggest thing also that um, we score the most highly on for a book um, if you were to look at the rubric it's it's so highly skewed on resonance so so if you're if you're writing a book and you think you're making a point very clear and this happens a lot with authors um, you can see where they were trying to go with it and they almost get there but then they somehow miss it and so and authors also will do this thing where at the beginning of their book wow it can be dynamic and then all of a sudden they get to the end it's like and the end instead of instead of the build-up and the crescendo and you have this exciting dynamic you know ending that's so powerful that just leaves you hanging and just you can't stop thinking about it and like you know when you see a movie and you can't stop thinking about it that's kind of the same thing with a book where if you can't stop thinking about it while you really spoke to somebody you really sent home that message and that resonance is really powerful and that's one of those things where I see a lot of people get oh, so good so so good until you get to the very end it's like how did you do that how did you get that close and then just boom and I'm not talking a cliffhanger where um, you know, maybe it's a series and, and you're going, oh, wait, I can't wait to read the next book. I'm talking, they wrapped it up too quickly. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's kind of a critical one. I'm trying to think of some other. We just recently I, I, announced. Oh, go ahead. Often, and it's a lot of work writing. If you did all that dynamicness in the beginning, and yes, I know dynamicness is not a word. I'm oh, my. <laughs> okay. Are you that's sure right. you're not getting sick? Yes, I'm getting sick on my own narcissism. That's why I'm getting sick. I'm joking. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's a lot of work to do that first half. And then if you're tired and you want it done and you know how to get it done, that's a lot of times I've, I've been with authors and they're just like, I'm getting it done. And I'm like, all right. But you do know that when you come out with the second edition, you better make that in as beautiful as that beginning. I have and don't ever send it out to reviewers or any place literary. Just do it for your fans and come back and do it again for your fans. Okay, so I have a question. So do you think that people could avoid that trap if they had beta readers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's one thing that we highly recommend on our website, author.pub. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can't, you, you all, what I usually recommend that people do is um, write that book and then put it away. Don't even look at it for a really long time because you get, um, I, I'm an author as well. And I literally just this morning, just for giggles, there's a book that I wrote about five years ago. And, and here's the one thing I could tell you, and I, I'm really good at going choo, choo, up, you know, so many different directions here. So um, I, the only reason I haven't published it, it's, it's a book that's very near and dear to my heart. I just adore it. It's a children's book. Um, and there are so many reasons why I feel like it's very powerful and I feel like young people should read this book. I haven't published it because I don't have time to follow through on it. And a lot of people think that writing the book is the hardest part. It is not. You can, you can write the most brilliant piece of literature and it can sit on a shelf and never go anywhere because the toughest part is promoting your book, marketing it, getting it in people's hands, letting people know about it. That is tremendous. And so I literally, I have, I, this book is to me is so golden that I can't I can't release it out into the world until I'm ready to nurture it and you know give it what it needs so that it can grow and get out there that being said I wrote that book five years ago I haven't looked at it in a long time but I wrote rewrote re rewrote that book so many times 
Um, and I had had a few beta readers um, read it as well. But that being said, I picked it up this morning and I thought, it will, I will finally be able to look at this book with fresh eyes because it's been so long since I've looked at it. Nope. I still look at that and I know the words, like the words are just still there to me. And this is a chapter book. It's not like a children's picture book with, you know, hundreds of words. I and mean, we're talking thousands of words and I still know it. So what I'm saying, where I'm going with this is that it's really, really, really hard to look at your own work with fresh eyes. So that's why I say, put it away. Don't look at it for a really long time. Then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. And sometimes that means one, two, three years later, depending on the material. Obviously, some material is no longer relevant three years later. So anyway, yeah. But yes, absolutely. Beta readers, by all means. By all means. So okay. really what I just said is for your narcissism. I just want y'all to know. For the, for the authors out there who just like, I have to have it done. That, that was for your narcissism. But really, beta but really, beta readers are the way to go. Although we love to hate them, we love them because they're like, they tell us the honest truth, like right after our editors, like chomp us. And then we're like, okay, we've done it. It's the most perfect book ever. Then we give it to a beta reader. And they're like, well, I don't quite understand. Or it was so sad at the beginning. I stopped on page 20. You're like, how? Oh, this page 21 was amazing. <laughs> Take it because these people read, because these people read. Take it and be like, well, a fan of mine told me that they couldn't get to page 21. So how can I fix it? I think beta readers are key. And thank you for validating that. I love beta readers. Well, I love to hate one, them. One you thing I should mention. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, just kind of um, piggybacking off of what you just said, authors, authors need to learn to be thick-skinned. If you're not already thick-skinned, you need to learn to be. And you need to, like you said, you need to learn to not take that personally. Um, it's fascinating to me how many people ask us for the why. They want to know why. Why didn't we review their book? Why didn't their book win an award? Um, all the whys. And and we used to we used to tell them. <laughs> and now we just don't. It's, we just don't because it's unfortunate how many authors they don't want to know. They they think they want to know, but they don't really want to know. And the problem <laughs> you're never going to be able to grow as an author and improve your skills if you cannot just mentally step away from it and just say, okay, this is somebody's honest opinion. They're providing me with constructive criticism. I'm not going to take it personally. I'm going to look at it and say, how can I use this information? And maybe they're wrong. I had somebody read one of my books one time, a work of fiction, and she was a screenwriter. And she told me that she, that I should take some of the dialogue out. Um, no, 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 no. I take that back. She wanted me to put more dialogue and less, mm -hmm. um, within the book yeah and I and I really looked at it with an open mind and I really tried to look at it from her perspective and I thought no she's she's looking at it as a screenplay and this is not a screenplay mm -hmm. so so anyway so you have to you have to run it through the salt you know take it with a grain of salt and run it through the mail and um and really honestly though be thick-skinned and and take that criticism and use it however you can to improve your 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 book so we're and let's be honest, I, we are over, but I'm going to say one more thing to your point, that as I say to everyone, writing is a career. Like, you you want a career in writing. And in the career in writing, sometimes when you have a regular career, nine to five, you have to sit down with your supervisor once a year, and they tell you all things you did wrong, all things you did great. So as writing is a career, sometimes you have to hear all things you did wrong. Absolutely. And that was my point on that one. And we are seven minutes over, and it was really wonderful to have you. But quick question, I want you to tell us where to find you guys again, the dates for your book festival. You know, guys, I'm, I'm still feverish. Book uh, festival and the library pub. And then what's next? No, I'm joking. Just, just tell us the dates for the book festival and the and, show, and then what's next. And where we can find you on the web. Okay. Okay. So the dates for the book festival are, I have to look again. May 10th is the Writers' Conference, and that's all day long. Um, May 10th is also the Lit Walk. That's on the, in the evening. Um, and then Saturday, May 11th, is the Book Festival. And we are presently taking um, registrations for authors and vendors for that event. So lit-themed vendors also, we love that. You know, people with kind of, you know, all the fun lit-themed T-shirts and bags and hats and all that kind of stuff. We really enjoy having that kind of stuff as a tie-in as well. So we're looking for authors, vendors, um, what have you, and certainly taking registrations now. Hey, oh, and the lit theme flask. 
to lit team. We have the lit team flash. Oh. We have literature themed flash and shot glasses. I love it. Hemingway is a person. Yeah, Hemingway I, is a thing. You should get Hemingway all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we, Hemingway always has to work his way into When we do our lit walk, we do um, one of the events is lit trivia. And so we work Hemingway into some of the lit trivia because he's just a fun one. He's just always fun to kind of work into that. So, yeah, anyway. So, but yeah, so that um, the website for that is gabfest.info. So it's actually Great American Book Festival is what it is. Um, so gab, Great American Book Fest.info. So, right. and what are you guys going to do next? What are you going to do next? What are you guys going to do next as as the um, board for the festival? Oh well, the actually actually since you ask, we we're working on getting our nonprofit. We're actually well, actually I take that back. We are officially a nonprofit now for the Great American Book Festival, and we're working on becoming a tax exempt um, 501c3. So we're working on that right now as well, which is exciting for us. Um, and, and other than that, you know, just growing and, and, and our, what we do here is so cyclical because we're, we're awards, awards. Well, actually right now we're kind of review, 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 and then we're in awards mode and then we're in book festival mode. So it's like, we're just at that sweet little window of time where we can go, <sighs> take a deep breath. <laughs> Enjoy it. And yeah, over here, it. we're just we're just starting to get up to that that stress time because our awards show and we're conference not, is, is coming up in March. So, oh, okay. yeah, we're we're just getting up to that anyway. Yeah, we are. We're so, gonna talk about that off the screen. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing the do's and don'ts of what we should and should not do as authors. And hopefully, you'll come back and share like four through seven. That will be fantastic. In I, May. In May. You know, the first it, week of May. Which yeah. helps. I so, hope so. <laughs> so it, uh -huh. Yeah, before we go, I just wanted to remind you guys that you can watch all of the, uh, you can watch what we do and uh, how we've done it on Just Right in Life, the docu-series show on Amazon.com. I did it because she would hate for me to say it. I was going to, like, wrap it in. Okay. So, <laughs> guys, you found out everything your ladies are doing at www.andwethought.com. And you can check out the show there. There's a link. And just remember that wisdom is all around you. If you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys. From Winona with the Not Yes Polished Nails. And Jade. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.